Hello everybody, my name is Tommy and welcome to Aero Workshop. Today I am going to make some keyhole slot jigs for to use with my routers here in the workshop. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, a keyhole slot is basically shaped like a keyhole that you put in the back of picture frames or plaques or false panels or stuff like that to hang on walls. So it allows the head of the screw to go in and then lock that in place so it can't fall off the wall. So I'm going to make two very simple jigs that are going to be easy to align once I have them made and I can also have them in the way that I can adjust the length of the slot that I actually cut. I'm, like I said, I'm going to make two. I'm going to make one for the use with a trim router which doesn't have a plunge base and I'm going to make one for the bigger router which does have a plunge base. So I'll bring this in a bit closer and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So to make these, I have just a couple of pieces of 3mm plywood and I have some offcuts of 12mm plywood. These strips I think are around 50mm and these ones are around 70mm wide. Now, the size of the plywood, as it happens, this is 250 by 198 and that one is 220 by 250 in the opposite direction. But that doesn't really matter. The part that matters is the section that we're going to be running the router in to create the T-slot. So, starting with the trim router, if I take the base off, I have a base on this that's 90 mil square. So, what I want is to be able to hold that from moving around and I can allow me to move it the length that I'm wanting to create the slot. So it'll be just a case of a couple of bits of plywood on like that and I'll be cutting pieces in here then 90 millimeters long so that I can use them as stops for that. And when it comes to the plunge router which I'm going to use this piece for, I'm going to be using a guide bush. Now the guide bush is 16 millimeters of a guide bush. So the same process, I'll be putting plywood on but I believe in 16 millimeters for to allow the guide bush to run. So what I need to do is cut two pieces of this plywood 250 millimeters long and two pieces 90. And on this one, I need to cut two pieces 220 mil long and two pieces 16 mil. So with those cut, I'm now ready to start putting these together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some CA glue in a couple of spots and place three sections of the plywood in place because I won't be gluing the fourth piece and I'll be able to turn them over then and I can put a few pins in from the back to hold them in place. So it's just a case of for me, just a couple of dots will do. Don't need to use too much. And I'm not going to bother with the spray because the plywood will soak it up fairly quick and it'll go off fast. So that's that one. And I'm just going to line this up with the bottom of that one and keeping it square like that. And using this piece then as a spacer, I can now do the other side. Like that. And on the one that I'm going to be using the guide bush on, I have just came eight millimeters off the center with a line so that the jig I make is going to be in the center of the piece of plywood. So I just do the very same thing again, keeping this one 
lined up with the line that I've drawn eight millimetres from the centre of the piece of plywood. And now I can just turn them over and pin them from the back, down both sides and across the bottom. So with the three outside pieces now attached, I still have one piece that's loose and adjustable. And that's so that I can say how long I want the slot to be. So the overall length of the slot can be changed whatever length you want it. So I'm going to set this up for 20 millimeters of a slot. But like I said, these can be adjusted after to create any length of a slot that you want in the future for different things. So on this one, I have the base of the router, which is 90 by 90. So if I want to go 20 mil long of a slot, I just need to be able to move that 20 mil. So I need the spacing in here 110 mil. And again, when I'm using the guide bush, the guide bush is 16 millimetres, so I'm wanting to move it 20 mil to give me a 20 mil slot. So I need this space here, 36 millimetres, which will still give me the 20 mil of a slot. So all I need to do is just mark those up. I'm going to mark this one at 110. And this one at 36. And then I'm just going to put that in position, clamp it in place, and I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to put two screws in the back so that I can adjust it at a later stage if I want it, just by removing those two screws. So with the setup of both jigs now completed, I want to do an initial pass using both of the jigs just through the three millimeter plywood that's in the bottom. And this will lead on to why these jigs are super useful over some of the other jigs that you might see on the internet. So I'm going to set up the trim router first and then I'll move on and do the plunge router setup. So with a T-slot bit set up in the router, this is a 10 millimeter one. As you can see, it's shaped like a T, so when you drop it down, it creates a bigger hole, and then when you run it, it creates a smaller channel that actually holds, acts as the keyhole. So, for this setup, when I put on the base, I am just going to set this through the plywood so that the T is just barely going through the plywood, a little bit over going through the plywood, like that. And then I'll be just locking that in place. So I want to work from the end that's not adjustable. So this end is going to be the end that's going to be the piece that can move. So the hole is going to be in this end. So using this technique, because this router doesn't plunge, you'll be actually having to go in at an angle like that, keeping it up tight to this end, drop it through the material, and once it's gone down level, you slide it forward, and then slide it back without lifting the router, 
turn off the router and then lift it out once it has stopped and that will create the clean keyhole that you want. So like I said, I'm only just doing an initial cut on these going through the plywood. So I'm just going to set this up on a couple of blocks so I won't cut the bench and we'll give it a run. And now I have cut a key slot in the plywood in the bottom of the jig. So I'm going to do the very same thing now on the other one using the plunge router. So with the plunge router now set up, I have the bit in place and I also have my 16 millimeter guide bush. And I have set the depth of plunge to actually go through the 12 mil plywood and the 3 mil plywood because this router is going to be sitting on top of both. So in this case, it's only a matter of, again, slotting it in, keeping it up towards the end that's not adjustable, plunge through, push forward, bring back, stop, and then let, release it and let it back out of the hole. So I'll do that now. So now the initial cut is now done in this jig as well. So with the initial pass now made on both of the jigs, I have gone ahead and I have added top to the top side of both of the jigs. So that's the part that will face the top of your picture frame or the top of your plaque so that you make sure you have the keyhole in the right direction. Trust me, I've often done it myself. Did you go in a big rush to do it and you put it on and then you've done the keyhole backwards? So by doing this, you always keep the top of the jig to the top of the piece of work. And the arrows then let you know that that's up as well and that's the direction you're going to be moving your router. So as you can see, I have my hole, which is the keyhole to let the head of a screw in, and I have the 20 millimeter slot that I had set the jig up to create. Now, if you don't need that to be 20 mil, if you want it to be half that or you want it to be longer, the beauty of this is you can just move the top piece here to adjust the amount of passage in the jig. And the main benefit of doing this and having that in the bottom of the jig with the piece of plywood is when you go to, say, just this is just for an example, a piece, and you're wanting to put, just for example, a keyhole position on that line and at that height. So the keyhole wants to be like that. That you can actually lay this on and line that up over the line in the piece of material that you're using so that you can always set them out exactly where you want. You're not trying to figure out what's half of this measurement or half of that measurement to get the position. Now, since I am going to be using these kind of just on the top of a lot of pieces, and I will be using that as a set 25 millimeters the whole way from the top of the plaques. I'm going to actually turn it over and I'm going to measure 25 millimeters from the top of the slot, like that, and I'm going to square across the jig with a line, and I'm going to add a little piece of scrap plywood to that line, like that, and I'm going to screw that in place. So now I can just use the G, and all I need is the line that I'm going to be putting it on, and that's going to keep it the right distance away from the top. 
So again, if you have a line anywhere, that's all you have to say, and you can just let it down like that to the peas. So this is just a sample piece I have here, but I have a center line drawn on it there. So all I need to do is just drop that on and set the line in the middle of the keyhole slot here, clamp that in place, and then run the router. And that's what I'm going to do now. So now with the router set up, I just have it set that the depth is going about an eighth of an inch from the shallow part of the bit, which is going to be the slot, from the top of the bit, which is going to be the hole. Once that's set through the, the jig, it's only a matter of now placing the jig onto the line, like that, and clamping it in place. Like that, and then as before, it's just a case of dropping it in and running it out. And there you have one perfectly cut keyhole slot. So that's how to use the jig with your trim router. Now, the very same principles will apply for using it with the plunge router. I'm not going to demonstrate it because it's only going to be repeating the very same thing a, a second time. But what this shows is, if you're wanting to make some keyhole slots, it doesn't matter whether you have a small trim router or a large plunge router, you can make a jig to be able to let you create some keyhole slots in projects that you have. So that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned something from this video. And if you did, maybe you consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, maybe you consider subscribing to the channel. It won't cost you a thing. So all that's left for me to say is thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Good luck.